Namaskar. This is a recording for Greece Swamini. I'm Dr. J.K. Grover recording my favorite story of Munshi Prem Chand, Bade Ghar Ki Beti. Uh, we are celebrating 140th anniversary of the great Hindi storyteller. Yes, Munshi Prem Chand. And well, each of Munshi Prem Chandji's stories have a message to convey. He weaves out a story deftly with a little background of the society, society's viewpoint that is, and his take on any situation that has touched him. So he's got a very, what a lovely way he juxtaposes the two, the society's view and his take on it. And it's very difficult to really pinpoint a single story, each a masterpiece in its own. His stories depict the hopeless conditions, but ends, always ends on a hopeful note that touches the reader's mind. This is a story about Anandi, a girl who's married into a family below her father's wealthy station. Beni Madhav Singh was a zamindar of Gauripur village. He was on hard days. He had two sons, Shrikant, the elder one, a graduate who worked in Allahabad to keep the home fires burning, leaving his beautiful wife and village life. The younger one, Lal Bihari, was the doted one and the spoiled brat who was interested in bodybuilding, sports and the like. Saturday evening, as usual, as Shrikant stepped in, outside in the courtyard, there was a little gathering of the villagers, villagers who's who, who always waited anxiously for him to return from Allahabad and would share, uh, waiting to share pieces of information about the country's affair, some old and new court cases, some uh, other talk of the town. They loved these discussions and two, three hours would slip by without even in a jiffy, jiffy. So after they went, they had their evening meal. And uh, when they finished the meal, Lal Bihari said, tell sister-in-law that we are no less than the upper echelons. His father supported him and said, it doesn't behove her to argue with the males. In deep thought, he walked into his room. Anandi, as usual, asked him, How are you? He replied sarcastically, I'm fine. But why have you created such a scene in the household? This was too much for Anandi. She spat anger. Shrikant was fair. He asked her to calm down and explain. She showed him her injured hand where Lal Bihari had thrown the slipper and hit him, hit her. She told him about the incident, about how she was waiting for Lal Bihari for lunch and how he had brought two birds he had caught and asked her to cook whilst he would have a bath. There were about 250 grams of clarified butter, which she used in cooking the meat. There was none left for the lentil soup. When he commented, she said she had used the entire clarified butter to cook the meat. He was surprised. He said it was only a couple of days ago that he had bought it, etc. What incited her wrath was when he mocked her, asking at her mother's place, were there revolutes of ghee, that is clarified butter flowing? She was more than peeved. She retorted, at our place, so much is given away to the servants and it makes no difference. He couldn't tolerate her insolence it seemed. He threw his wooden slipper. Had she not put up her hand, 
it would have landed on her head. I was shaken. And I'm not used to such behavior. I was livid. I stopped all household chores as a silent protest, waiting for you to return, which was two days away. He listened to her calmly, didn't say a word. Night he thought of her greatness, how she had settled in from the lap of luxury to the ordinary settings here, her matrimonial place. How she had refused to go with him to Allahabad, saying that she had to look after father-in-law. After all, even she had some responsibility towards the household, she had said. In fact, he was so proud of her. He was angry. In the morning, he went to his father and said, decide whom he wanted to be with him or Lal Bihari. He for one did not want to see his face ever again. Father reasoned with him saying, don't go by Anandi's version. After all, Lal Bihari is a little foolish. Shrikant said, he could have used words, but violence is totally unacceptable. I just don't want to see Father, I don't want to see his face ever. And no one can change my mind. Lal Bihari was listening to the harsh words of his beloved brother. He started weeping. He had never imagined such a punishment. In tears, he ran into his room to pack his belongings. Yes, of course, he would be the one to leave. Before moving out, he stopped outside Anandi's door and asked her to pardon her. By now, Anandi's soft heart had already melted into tears. She admonished herself, me and my big mouth, my accursed tongue, she told, she admonished herself. It has fanned the fire of discord between the two brothers. Call him in, she told her husband. No way, he said. She went out and held Lal Bihari's hand and said, you are not going anywhere. But brother doesn't even want to see my face, he wailed. Now Shrikant came out and hugged his younger brother. Baini Madhav Singh was returning home and saw his sons. He was overwhelmed to see the two brothers in a tight embrace with tears streaming down their faces. He came in and declared, Bade ghar ki beti aisi hi hoti hai, bigadta hua kaam bana deti hai. Daughters from houses of sound values are always great. He gave Anandi the credit for keeping his family as one unit. So that comes to the close of the story. And, uh, you know, there are many an Anandi in the Indian social fabric who shield many a slur and strive to keep the joint family from disintegrating. Thank you.